Thank you for tuning in to the talk show. I am Andra Hedden. Today I am joined by the one and only David Powell. Thank you yes. for joining. Hey, great to be here. It is great to have him, and I'm so excited for the conversation that we are going to tap into today. Really quick, if you do not know David, he is a an industry veteran. Today we're going to talk about security and why he is the perfect person to have in this conversation. He's had 20 plus years in the space. He was with three of the top 25 MSPs, had a couple of stints also with vendors, so he has a plethora of information to talk about and some great stories. He's a great storyteller, Thank so you. you'll see a little bit of that today also. So this is gonna be this is gonna be great. So we're gonna yeah. tap into security as I mentioned and really why the conversation is so important right now. So start us off. So yeah. what what does that conversation look like right now around security, MSPs, the vendor space? Tee us up a little bit. So security's really scary, right? Is that I think the misperception a lot of people have is that if in your neighborhood, if somebody's house got broken into the Facebook page would light up, people would start texting their friends, the homeowner association would come out and tell everybody, hey, there's a break in, be extra vigilant, all this kind of stuff. And no one would have like any negative thoughts about, oh, their house got mm -hmm. broken into, ha ha ha. Mm -hmm. Right? Well, in the business world, everyone thinks their business is in like a nice part of town mm -hmm. when it's really in like the worst part of town, mm -hmm. right? Because no one's talking about businesses getting. Uh, breached and having cybersecurity problems. There's like a stigma related to mm -hmm. that. So the business community has been kind of quiet about it. So there's this false sense of security in the business community that, oh, well, no one wants my stuff. I'm too small. When really everyone is getting breached. The news is filled with story after story after story mm -hmm. of companies being breached, but no one's really kind of connecting those dots that it's, well, the people next door to me and the people down yep. the street from me, it's people like me that are get, getting breached. So the, the awareness is kind of there, but it hasn't quite translated into like action. So you've got a lot of people who know the risk, but it's this kind of ephemeral specter out there where they can't get their arms around it. Mm -hmm. It seems big and scary, but they can't like necessarily put their finger on what is it they don't know what to, to do, do to start exactly. it, right. And so your large companies have security teams focused on that. Small mm -hmm. to medium businesses don't. They have MSPs that yep. they rely on. Absolutely. So now they're trying to figure out what do we do, and it's up to the MSP to come in and say, hey, here's what we think you ought to do to improve your security posture. Uh, so I have not heard that type of analogy of the what neighborhood is your business yeah. in, but I think the thing I think is really interesting about that is the whole thought of, oh, Oh, it could never happen to me, right? I think that I think one of the things you're tapping into, just like in a neighborhood where, oh, well, it's not gonna happen to me. I live in a great part of town, so you don't hold it against right. others to not have a security system or have the most intricate, you know, alarms. But when it comes to business, the stigma that you're mentioning, it is kind of a, a hush hush of, okay, it's not gonna happen to me. And then it, we're, we're we've got some things in place. We think we're taking care right. of. And so, talk to me a little bit about. Um, the conversation around it, and then two, how you think that MSPs should start to have that conversation internally for themselves, and then how they should start building something something out to take right. to market. So the conversation I think most MSPs are having is wrong. Yeah. Okay. Is okay, that tell me a lot that. of them are going and doing what I call scare and sell. So okay. they're going and doing an assessment, and then they're coming in with this binder and saying, Andrew, here's all the stuff you suck this at. You, you know, and you're place, like, yeah. ah. <laughs> and so the way I kind of use it as an example to try to get salespeople to move away from that is this idea like, you know, you've got two great boys and if you went and talked to a financial planner and said hey we're, we're ready to start planning for college they're gonna say great you got to save five thousand dollars a week and all stuff you'd mm -hmm. be like whoa i mean there's no way we can make this happen and so instead you're like oh forget it we'll just take out a bunch of loans mm -hmm. and buy a big screen tv on the way home sure. so i feel better sure. right instead, instead of like Asia. hey can y'all just not yeah. go to dinner once a week. Let's start there and put $50 away a week and build this little plan. So what happens similarly is that MSPs go in and talk to their client and they give them like, here's all the million the things you got to do. And so, like, hey, here's three things. Let, let's focus on these three mm -hmm. things. We get those done. I'll give you three more and focus on those. So you got to give them a path to take that's actionable because what happens is that when you scare and that. sell, it the bridge seems so, it's a bridge too far. Mm -hmm. So then they're like in action comes from that not mm -hmm. action and you really just want them to get on this journey right get on this journey so that's where I think salespeople for MSPs really kind of struggle with that the second thing is they're really 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 concerned about how do I overcome this objection that if you're my client and I'm the MSP and I come in and say hey Andrew I'm here to talk to you about cybersecurity," mm -hmm. and you're like whoa aren't you doing that for me already right and now all of a sudden because people equate technology and cybersecurity as tied together mm -hmm. and what does an MSP do well they do about technology so mm -hmm. therefore they must be doing my cyber security, security right and it's really a whole different conversation around risk and risk mitigation and all this kind of stuff so you have to go oh wait 
Now we do some of that for you. Let me under, let me explain what we do do for you. We do mm -hmm. patching and antivirus and stuff like that. But here's all this other security you need to be considering and have that conversation. That but salespeople can, are yeah. scared because right. they don't want to be on the receiving end of like, whoa, wait a minute, why I thought did, you were why doing, are you this. doing this. Right. So talk to me about really quick. Talk so so. Take it back to the MSP for a second. So, so obviously, sales teams. We always say, you know, a salesperson sells what they know best, right? A lot yeah. of times, sales teams are scared to have that conversation as well because maybe the MSP doesn't really have their fully baked security strategy in place. So, so one, do you think that MSPs are doing this right for themselves? Do you think that they've got a great security? You know, are they, are they eating their own dog food? Are they actually yeah. practicing what they preach? Talk, talk to me about that for a second, and then I want to go deeper into what they can do and offer. Yeah, zero chance. Most MSPs are not doing this well at all, right? And so the analogy I like to use on that is, you know, if I wanted to get into shape and hired a um, personal trainer, right? And so I get on my new gym clothes. I went to Lululemon and got me some stuff, you know, okay. some guy stuff. And you look all ready to roll down at the gym. And then the, here comes my personal trainer, and he weighs like 400 pounds. He's sweaty. He's shoving a Big Mac in his face and washing it down with Mountain Dew. I'd be like, I'm not listening to a word Anything this guy says, has yeah. to say, right? Is who takes advice from a 400-pound personal trainer who's slovenly? Well, that is, unfortunately, the MSP going out to talk to their clients. They're the 400-pound personal trainer. Is mm -hmm. They're going out and saying, hey, you need, Mr. Client, to improve your cybersecurity, and you need to get, you know, improvement in these areas, but they haven't done any of that themselves, right? They've taken mm -hmm. their scarce resources, their security experts, and they deployed them appropriately into revenue-producing mm -hmm. activities. Absolutely. But they've ignored their own environment. So I feel like it gives the salespeople a lot more credibility that if you go through that process of self-assessment first, so mm -hmm. take your security guys and do all the things, and be real open and honest with the rest of the company around what you're doing, then the sales team can see how that process plays out. So then they can go sit down with the client confidently and say, mm -hmm. hey, Andrew, let me tell you, we just put ourselves through this. And we yep. thought we had this thing lit. Yes. And we found some things we had to improve. Let me tell you how that process played out in our own environment mm -hmm. and then how this would play out in yours. And then it's a little more vulnerable. Mm -hmm. It draws them in a little more. And it walks them through what the process would look like mm -hmm. that you did yourself. Right. And it gives them comfort knowing that you have You've done the things also. that right. you're trying to get them to do. And back to the other thing that you said, too, about the if if – if you are going in too heavy, right? If you're if you're leading and you're going too strong into that sale and you're you're saying, hey, these are all the things you need to do. This is everything in your security practice that you should have, they're gonna procrastinate, they're gonna be scared, they're gonna be yeah. overwhelmed, it's gonna be too much. But with what you're just saying, if you say, hey, we, we just did this, it wasn't so bad, and, and this is what we found out, and we actually found too, even though we are this space, we found here were some gaps, yeah. and this is how we filled them. And so, no, I love that. And then back to the, the, the sales rep, they get more confident, and then they can sell it better as well. Yeah. So I think that those are some great tips. So do a quick internal audit if you haven't already done this internally, and, and I think those are some great tips for how and, they can get in place right now. And I think now. tying into that, take the mindset of the personal trainer, yeah. right? Is it the personal trainer, some people want to run a marathon, some people just want to lose a little weight right. some people want to run a 5k right. right and you tailor your plan accordingly and nobody one day goes from the couch to yes. running 26 miles right. right so there's a process in between mm -hmm. no one goes from the couch to run a 5k there's a mm -hmm. process in between so how do you give them a process that's executable against this goal depending on their risk profile and risk tolerance maybe it's a 5k maybe it's a marathon mm -hmm. but you got to give them an actual plan so how do you come alongside them as a personal trainer like yes, hey let's go run a mile them. together yes. right as opposed to just like here's all the things you got to do <laughs> right. and then they're again in action results absolutely no and I, th I think that's such an easy way to explain that so thank you you. Yeah. And and on on the flip side of that now, okay, so if, if now you're teed up, David's given you all the little nuggets to start the <laughs> internal process. So now let's take it to the flip side. So let's, if we've got everything internally set up, we did our internal audit, we know where we stand, we filled our own holes, our sales team is ramped up, we feel good. Talk me through what it looks like to start to put together a security offering a secure is it an offering I yeah mean, show me t tell me and, and tell everyone tuning in wh what where we should go from here yeah so I think there's a couple ways to think about that one is are you are you creating an offering or a practice right okay. so an offering would be we need a multi-factor authentication offering mm -hmm. right so I have my standard core MSP set of mm -hmm. offering you know and some people have precious metals pricing or whatever and good better best whatever it may be and then we're going to have multi-factor authentication with a layer mm -hmm. on top or advanced threat protection or whatever it may be as an offering so that's fine and that's a great intermediate step and that's usually vendor driven we mm -hmm. select a vendor and that vendor provides this thing for us that we sell out and then i think most 
sophisticated MSPs are really kind of moving to that practice. Okay. To where they have a practice of security where maybe they can do the assessment beforehand, maybe they have skills in that, and they have a suite of offerings that they can offer depending on what the client profile looks like. Okay. So what is their risk tolerance? What is their compliance regulatory environment? And that's really in the kind of classic challenger model that teach, tailor, take control mm -hmm. is I want to teach you like, hey, Andrew, here's what you maybe didn't know that these regulatory requirements require of you. Okay. okay? And now I'm going to tailor my offering and it's like, okay, so here's based on these check boxes you have to check, these 10 things that I offer will check these boxes for you and then take control is like and we need you to act mm -hmm. you can't sit where you are you need to move so that idea of kind of coming in and understanding hey here's what their whole scope looks like here's what their profile looks like here's what their risk tolerance is here's what their compliance or regulatory environment looks mm -hmm. like and then how do i build a suite of offerings that's flexible enough to meet to what their there. requirements yeah. are and you know there's a whole bunch of different things in there i mean that can be you know, Cisco Umbrella, that can be multi-factor authentication, that can be Perch, which mm -hmm. is what we do, you know, as a SIM. Um, we have a SOC that goes with it. And so there's all these different things that you kind of layer in that stack um, that are applicable to some, all, most, mm -hmm. whatever of your client profile looks like based on who you serve. It, are, do you have recommendations as far as you mentioned a couple, if, if partners are sitting there right now going, okay, we're getting into this game, we want to be a, you know, a managed security provider as well. What other, you know, vendor names do you think should be in that stack? Obviously Perch, you know, yeah. maybe pieces of Cisco, anything else? There, that... Well, there's a bunch, but okay. I'll say it really kind of, I mean, as much as I would love to give you like a full name, right, right. it really <laughs> depends on who are your clients, right? Right. So if your clients, if you focus on healthcare, mm -hmm. HIPAA has some specific requirements, yep. right? And so Perch checks those boxes because those require log, um, log aggregation, mm -hmm. log review, stuff like that. Financial services has some, CMMC has some. So I think it really kind of depends on who do you serve should determine what your suite you is. Because yeah. if you build the stack and then you go out, that may or may not meet the demands mm -hmm. of what your client base looks like. So Absolutely. take your client first and say, okay, what do we need to do to serve them? And then build your stack out aligned Based to that. Based on that. Yeah. yeah, no, I love that. That's okay. a smarter approach. So, so, so building a practice yeah. is is the direction that that partner should take so which i love so you've got the the offerings are however you decide the precious metal it and and, and however your tiered programs look and then how do you i want to go back a little bit to that conversation the the sales rep that's scared to have the conversation yeah how do you think that a successful savvy sales rep can position that chat with a current client when you're upsell cross-selling right you want to you want to start and expand into the clients that you already have versus necessarily going out and finding new. That's always wonderful, but you can go deeper with the current ones you have. How do you advise or how would you share with our partners to, to not be afraid of that conversation? And here are some quick lead-ins to how you can have that conversation without being worried that you're going to end up in, a, in an awkward situation because they yeah. thought you were already doing it. It's what a are business, some tips? It's a business conversation for business people, okay. right? Is I think that the problem in lots of companies is they view cybersecurity as a technology thing when it's a risk Thing, mm -hmm. right and all of us have to factor risk all the time i'm yeah. in a hurry mm -hmm. but i'm also more likely to be in a car accident if i drive above the speed limit mm -hmm. but am i going to accept that risk to get there on time or am i going to be a little mm -hmm. late i mean people people plan for address and mitigate risk all, all the, time, the time right and that's not usually what the technical contact at your msp client is prepared to have that conversation, mm -hmm. right? They think in ones and zeros and blinky green lights, right, right. it's like that. So you've <laughs> got to go have that conversation with the business person. And then the education component has to be there. You have to educate them on, okay, here's what this looks like. And then I really feel that you need a story to be able to tell them of how a breach would happen mm -hmm. so that they can see themselves inside it. Because yep. right now there's not a good way to make it like real. Mm -hmm. So, you know, if you went to, you know, like a, a women's self-defense class, mm -hmm. right? And they would talk to you about, okay, you're walking across the parking lot after coming out of, you know, the store mm -hmm. and you're walking, this guy comes up behind you, grabs you behind the neck. What do you do? And they like teach you, you know, what to do. You need to think through what does a cybersecurity breach look like here? Right. And, and so someone has got compromised credentials. Mm -hmm. They have done this, they've done this, they've done this. And all of a sudden you being like, oh, so that's how it happens. You have to take it from this like big, scary thing that's right. hard to wrap your head around. Put it in the day-to-day -day for And that. tell them, mm -hmm. this is what this would look like. You're mm -hmm. going to come in one day and $250,000 are going to be out of your 
account. You're going to wonder why. It's because mm-hmm. your accounts payable clerk wired the money who they thought was you, yeah. but it wasn't you, Mr. CEO. It was to some bad actor somewhere. So lots of times I feel like we don't do a good job of telling the story mm-hmm. that the client can see themselves in that makes it real. And then they're like, I don't think I have a response to that. I don't mm-hmm. think I have a plan for that. I don't know how I would address that. Absolutely. What do I do to keep this from happening to me? Absolutely. I think I think one of the so in, in p- putting things in that in that real term in the day in the life of whoever it is that you're talking to is so incredibly important. And one of the one of the pieces I'll tag that into the 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 communication lead gen piece as well because it's it's that constant you know figuring out how you need to turn that conversation for them and then dripping that to them as well, having that yeah. the sales conversation, but dripping communications so that they can really start to understand whether it is a, a particular area. So back to you know sending communication, saying look what happened at your neighbor business look what happened over here so that they can start making it seem like wow it could happen to us it's not just someone over in a different state that we never come or a big business so talk to us a little bit about the you know it seems like big businesses have got it all figured out right you would think large enterprises they've got these massive security teams how do the smaller businesses right or the smaller msps figure out how to get these practices up off the ground to be competitive with security (laughs) yeah so I think, you know, the misperception with a lot of small businesses is that who wants my stuff? Right. Like, but if you and I may say we're idiots, we decide we want to rob a bank. Okay. Right. So if, I don't know if you've ever been in like the downtown Bank of America building in downtown Charlotte, but it has facial recognition. Okay, I haven't been It has been armed there. guards, okay. all this kind of stuff. Are we going to pick that one or are we going to pick the smallest bank in the most rural town of Florida, <laughs> right. you know, where the closest cop is an hour <laughs> and a half away else, or something yeah. like that? You yeah. know, so when people think that, well, I'm too small, that's a false sense of security mm-hmm. because if I'm a bad guy, do I want to go after... The, the armed bank or the one that nobody's looking at. Yep. the one that nobody's looking at. Mm-hmm. So this, and if I break into enough of those banks, then there's a lot of money, whereas, you know, maybe the Bank of America has more in one, mm-hmm. but if it, the effort to break into 50 is pretty low, well, then maybe I've gotten a lot more money with a lot less risk Absolutely. from that. So I think that the getting guys to realize, okay, it's not about being small. Mm-hmm. It's not that your stuff isn't valuable because, you know, it's $250,000 important to your business. A lot of small businesses, if they had to pay a ransom of $250,000 mm-hmm. or if someone had been fished and erroneously wired yep. $250,000, $250, to a small business is a it's lot of money. And now. I know... I mean, I could rattle off countless companies that have been in the middle of that. Mm-hmm. I'm, I'm aware of a mortgage company, and they had money in escrow and stuff, and the bad guys were sitting in their email just watching, and it was time to wire the money to this law firm, and these guys had gone out and bought the domain. The bad guys had bought the domain that looked just like the law firm, but mm-hmm. they used a capital I instead of an L. And so they wow. even looked, and went, well, that looks like the name of the law firm, right. and so they wired the money to the wrong place. Right, but the bad guys had sat there. They had looked at all the transactions that were coming through for months mm-hmm. and waited for one day when they found the right thing, and that's two hundred fifty grand, yeah. right? And so that's a pile of money to your small to medium mm-hmm. business. That's the difference you make in payroll and not making payroll. Yep. So you just have to think: is you know the scale is different, but mm-hmm. the impact is probably greater in the smaller absolutely. space. You absolutely. know, that's a rounding error for Bank of America. Definitely, no, absolutely, <laughs> you know. and, and, and that's and, and I, I, I love that tip for anyone tuning in too because even if you don't have the stories to tell, you can use these examples yeah. and and share different things that that you've seen happen or heard happen and use that in your in your pitches in your upfront conversation so that when you're going out to find that new business, it, it's 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 really made apparent how lethal this can be to a small business and it's not just the targets of the world it's not just yeah. the banks of america that yeah. that hackers are going after and well and, so and that's story important. collecting so ask your team hey what what have you heard about what have yes, we fixed I, and, and gather those stories yes. in and then socialize them so that everyone has those and that you're not just kind of making it up on the fly what about what about from a standpoint of other trends that you're seeing that you think would be important for any partner watching right now to be taking advantage of? Yeah, so uh, the big ones are increased regulatory environments everywhere. Okay. So a big one that just came out in January of this year is called CMMC. Okay. And CMMC is a standard for DOD contractors. Mm-hmm. And it basically says it has the elements of NIST 800-171 plus other stuff. Okay. And it's interesting is that it used to be where if you came online and you didn't meet a certain standard, you could put it on your plan of action and measurements at your POAM and say, we don't we do not do that now, but in eight months we'll have it done. Mm-hmm. Now CMMC is a pre-award certification, so you have to prove that you have it done beforehand, and it is a mad scramble. 
anyone that does work with the gut with the DOD is on has to comply with this, and it is a crazy scramble to get assessed and all that kind of stuff. Okay. And so there's, I think there's a lot of opportunity in CMMC. There's a lot of uncertainty mm-hmm. in that, and it is a kind of a hot space where people are looking for help. Interestingly, the DOD has had an initiative in like the last decade around supplier diversity. Mm-hmm. We don't want just want to be Raytheon and Northrop Grumman. We have a lot more vendors, and so they got a bunch of mom and pops. Right. And now you have these mom and pops that have to adhere to the same to stuff the same that Raytheon standards. and Northrop Grumman wow, has to yeah. adhere to. So it's a big it's a big deal. So that, and then I really think that you're hearing a lot more around um, how do we get the SMBs to improve their cybersecurity profile. And so the government regulatory bodies have gone and looked at SMBs and like, well, they don't have an IT team. Mm -hmm. So they have to then come to the MSPs. Mm -hmm. And so I wouldn't, it would not surprise me at all if there becomes like standards for MSPs that they have to adhere to. Um, So I think that the more you can get ahead of that from a security standpoint, Mm -hmm. the better off you are. But I'll also say the talent is really kind of hard because it's a different type of nerd. You know, yeah, your talk typical, about that a little bit. Talk yeah, about your that typical a bit. MSP nerd <laughs> and he is means that in the most loving in the way. nicest yeah. way possible. I actually <laughs> asked our team at a prior. Pl- I mean, do y'all prefer nerds or geeks against nerds? I'm like, okay, I got it. And um, but you know, your typical MSP nerd might be a scripting guy that uh-huh. he learned Python on the side or something like that. But they're going to be route and switch and server and VMware those kind of guys. Your security guys are entirely different kind of dude mm-hmm. right um and so where do you go find them so mm-hmm. that talent is scarce where you may have a guy on your team that you just kind of learned python and scripting on the side right no one just learned security on the side right, right? so you're going to have to figure out how can i dedicate headcount to this and bring some headcount in to bring that knowledge um, to bear yep. or it's just going to be a really long gap for your internal guys to kind of get up to speed you know on that so Got i think it. you probably need to go hire some talent internally Mm -hmm. um, because the winds are definitely blowing to where the small to medium businesses are going to have to meet certain requirements Mm -hmm. um, just because they're they're at risk too much right now and the governments and the banks and all kind of stuff are kind of tired of dealing with them getting Mm -hmm. breached so I so I love this. I hope you do too. Um, so these are all amazing nuggets, and and I hope that this has been really, really, really helpful. Before we part, and I think we could talk yeah. about security for a really yeah. long time. Um, but before we 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 tune off, talk me through some some quick tips. Anything yeah. else that you want to share? Any stories you want to tell? Anything that you think is is pertinent that that partners would would need to sure. hear? So I think the most important thing is an MSP. I've talked to hundreds and hundreds of MSPs over the years, and they tend to get to a certain spot, and they kind of stop. Okay. And I'll always ask them, you know, and they'll tell me kind of where they are, and I'm like, ah, it's the Charlie story. So okay. uh, the Charlie the story, story. The Charlie story? Okay. The Charlie story. Okay. So Charlie was a guy that uh, worked with me at a place called TechLinks, and Charlie was our best pre-sales engineer. He was our best implementations guy. He was our best tier three support guy. Okay. He was just the best. Charlie, surprisingly, only wanted to work 40 to 50 hours a week, right? <laughs> and so we reached this point where we couldn't scale past Charlie. Okay. So if we put him on pre-sales and tier three suffered. We put him on tier three, then pre-sales suffered or implementations. And so we realized that we needed to scale Charlie. So the way that we talked about it was um, I said, okay, imagine if Charlie opened a restaurant and his best dish was grouper over grits, right? Okay. So the first night, 20 people come, Charlie can plate 20 group over grits. The second night, 40 people come. He's kind of running around crazy, but he mm-hmm. can still get it done. The third night, he hires David and Andra mm-hmm. to come in and help him. But the restaurant people are not coming for David and Andra's group over grits. They want Charlie's group over grits. Mm-hmm. So how does he create a recipe that if you're making it or I'm making it, is exactly it's the, same. the same that he mm-hmm. did? And so it's his conversion from people to process, right? Okay. Is that you've got to stop selling Charlie. And our sales team was great at selling Charlie. Mm-hmm. Hey, Andrew, Charlie will take care of you. Mm-hmm. And you're like, oh, I like Charlie. That's going to be good. Mm-hmm. Instead, they had to grow like pivot towards the process. Like, here's what's going to happen once you sign. Once you sign, you're going to get a call from our onboarding team. We're going to get assigned an onboarding engineer. Da, 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 mm-hmm. da. And you lay out this process. And then you're looking at it and going, okay, I can trust that process is going to yield the result I want. I don't have to be dependent on this guy. Yep. Right? So most MSPs that struggle with scale is because they can't scale past their Charlie. Whatever their Charlie's name that. is, is okay. that Charlie is the cog, and they look at Charlie as an asset. They'll talk glowingly about Charlie, mm-hmm. their Charlie. But what they need to do is figure out, okay, how do we recipe eyes right Charlie what he's doing, process. so yeah. that we can um, put that out. So if you said, "What's my one great piece of MSP advice?" It was, "Is how do you have a process that delivers the results instead of the people that deliver the results?" Mm-hmm. So the people become plug and play. Not that they aren't awesome, and you don't want awesome people, but you got to have an awesome process to plug awesome people into. I I think that is amazing advice. So I I really hope that some of these nuggets resonated with you. So 
process over people, making sure that you're actually having practices, not offerings. And there's just, there's so many good things that David just tapped into. And I really, really, really hope that this challenges you and inspires you to go and perfect your security offering and practice and, and putting it into play. So if you've got any additional questions, feel free to reach out. We will make sure that they get answered for you. And thank you for tuning in. Thanks.